The Port of Portland is a large quasi-state agency in Oregon, which operates three airports, including Portland International. It also operates several marine terminals along the mighty Columbia River and sees thousands of tons of cargo come through its facilities every week. When they decided to relocate their headquarters from a downtown high-rise to the airport, they had a prime opportunity to go green and be proud of it. This is exciting, Don. This is a very new building. Forbes magazine rated it one of the top uh, 10 greenest buildings in the world. It's in the, the world? It's the Port of Portland. Can in you believe that? That's right, and they're just a few points away from being lead platinum. Bill, Hi, guys. Andrew How are you? Mallory. Great to see you, Andrew. Hi. Bill Wyatt. Good, Good to see you. you. Yeah. Now, Bill, you're the executive director here, so you're pretty much at the top of the pyramid mm -hmm. as far as the organization yes, is concerned. Yes. Tell us about this whole building. This is the most fascinating project. Well, uh, the Port of Portland operates both the seaport here in Portland, we have an international seaport and the airport. And so the decision to build the building was really a decision about bringing those two parts of our organization into one place. In the course of building a building as well, that creates just a, a wonderful working environment for our staff. Uh, lots of natural light, uh, excellent uh, circulation, great communication back and forth. Virtually no private offices in the building. Uh, everybody's out in the open. The whole building is a complete system, kind of like a, a living mechanism. It is. Uh, so we recycle all of the water that comes into the building and the water is treated through uh, essentially a, a man-made wetlands called a living machine. Uh, and then the water either goes back into the, uh, the toilets and the, the urinals or it goes to the evaporator for the, uh, the building heating and cooling system. Uh, the heating and cooling system itself is really extraordinary. It's a, it's a very uh, deep earth uh, system that sends pipes three to four hundred feet into the ground and uses the ambient temperature of the earth to either heat or cool the water depending on the time of the year. And this can save uh, 70 to 80 percent of the energy that would otherwise be spent heating and air conditioning. That's some uh, of that building. geothermal we learned about, Henry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That type of geothermal heating and cooling. I think it's the largest application in the state of this type of, uh, of system. And then the, the building materials are all uh, sustainable. The carpets are old uh, plastic bottles uh, that have been rewoven into... The, these are? Yeah. yeah. Recycled yeah. content. Yeah. You're kidding me. Plastic bottles. Fast growing uh, red oak, uh, which is a very sustainable uh, building material. We paid great attention to that uh, as we developed the building. So what's the philosophy behind the over the top green building that this is? We made investments that we could justify based on a complete financial analysis of the uh, of the various features of the building. And we wanted to do that to, in part, demonstrate to our community it can be done. So when it comes to saving money by going green, what do you estimate you're actually saving on an annual basis? The port is about $3 million a year less expensive to operate today than it was before we moved into this building. So it's so a very significant a savings. Yeah, well, more or less, or actually our customers got a break. The Pacific Northwest, Andrew. Some of that view you were talking about. This, this is why I moved here, because of this. Mount Hood, we ski up there in the winter. The summers are gorgeous, beautiful. But we're here for something slightly more important than the view, right? The Columbia River. And the Columbia River. How about 10,000 square feet of green roofing? Oh, Check man. this out. Yeah. You ever seen anything this big before, Don? This is over the top. Hi, Dan. Hi there. This is exciting to be here. This is really a privilege. Thank you. It's Andrew, great nice to, to have you. Down. Nice to meet you. This keeps the building cool mm -hmm. in the summertime, and does it help in the wintertime? Uh, it does. It helps to kind of uh, trap the stormwater, and the plants use the water, and then whatever is left over drains off into the drainage system. Have a look at this. Come over see this. I'll just move over here. Not allowed to stand on the green part, but I'm standing on the stones here. And you can see, how deep is this, Dan? This is about six inches. 
and it's just starting to become green now. You said it was dormant over the it summer. It was green when we planted it, and then it goes dormant over the summer. And then now, with the fall rains, it's greened back up again. Does it flower? It does flower. Reminds me of the Scottish Highlands, like the moss mm -hmm. and the heather. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a very similar kind of consistency.